Stairs and railings. Stair by component. For now, we only have one stair in this building, and that's all we want ultimately. So let's delete the stair by sketch that we made in this file. So I'm just going to orbit to it, click on it, I'll hit delete. Now it's going to go as well as the railing because the railing was hosted by the stair. Okay, so let's go to our basement again. And we're going to now draw the stair by component. So this is a different way of drawing stairs in Revit. So I'm going to click on stair and then stair by component. This is very similar to sketch mode, except you're going to see what it is that you're doing more live. So if I were to just start clicking somewhere, you'll notice that once I click, it actually shows you the stair almost done. I'm just going to undo that and we'll start fresh here. One thing that's really nice about stair by component is we can go here to location line and just click on right or left justification. So if I say on the right, and we're still drawing from the bottom up, so the basement up to the main floor is the idea here. But now I can justify it on the right, so watch what happens. We'll just click here and then we'll go up. So now I'm drawing it based upon that. Okay, I could maybe take it up 10 risers. Now, one little thing that we have to keep in mind is you see how the stringer sits proud of the stair? That's something that we're going to have to adjust. Notice what's happening is automatically it's trying to put in a landing for you. So you never really have to draw the landing. And if I just go to the end here, click it, now there it is. So we may want to move this in after. We can do that as well. I'm just going to hit escape twice. And you can click on the stair. And you can actually just stretch that in. Now, sometimes it'll give you warnings here. The actual width of one or more runs is less than the minimum run width specified in the stair type. You know, maybe we've said it's supposed to be three feet wide minimum, and now it's two foot ten. That could be a problem, and it's going to warn us. It's going to let us continue, but not without warning. So we could keep stretching that if we wanted to. Or in the parameters, we could just type in four feet and then apply it, and then it'll stretch out from there. I'm going to use a new tool here. It's called Align, and I'm just going to go up here to the Align tool. It's under Modify, Create, Stair, or in general, it's under Modify. I'm just going to click on Align, and I'm just going to click on that reference plane, and then I'm going to click on that side of the stringer. So that can be a very powerful way to move things exactly where you want them. Now, what about this one? You see it moved the whole thing because it doesn't want to assume that you're going to shrink down that landing. That landing needs to be at least as deep as the stairs are wide. Okay, I'm going to hit escape twice, one, two, and just click on this run. And I'll say four feet. There you can see that it updates. What if you wanted to move this forward? So I'll just move it 11 inches. There it goes. So as you can see, very intuitive way of creating stairs, this using the stair by component. Some of what I've been doing has been very specific on selection. For instance, I'm going to just undo one step here. I want to select this whole run and perhaps something else. If I were to just window it like that, I'd be able to get everything that I want. Whereas if you window it from the right to the left, you might get more than you want. So I can go from the left to the right, just get that, and then I can move it like that. Okay, now before we're done, let's click on the 3D view. What we want to do is just check the railing. So I'm going to go over here to the railing type and just click on that. So notice here you can choose whether it's based upon the stringer or the treads. You can also decide what type of railing that you want. Right now these are just sort of the standard ones that it's choosing. Let's just choose for fun the glass panel bottom fill. We'll say OK. And then when we finally hit the check mark, which is finish edit mode, now it's telling me here the rail is non-continuous. So again, it's gonna warn you if there's ever anything that's happening not quite to its liking. We're gonna leave it at this for now because we're gonna be editing this further in another video. What I'd like you to do though before we're done, let's just click on the stair and then press and hold control. And now just click on the railing on the outside and then the railing on the inside. And let's just go to this temporary hide isolate sunglasses. And we're going to go to Isolate Element. There we go. So now we can just see this, and we can see what we've created.